all right guys i'm back uh, to continue the lecture just a reminder that please subscribe the channel if you haven't done yet all right so we were discussing the social pressure uh, i hope it's pretty clear to you i have explained it in detail i would like to show you this picture which says that you know uh, which shows you that a person who's here he has so many social pressures that are coming into him from different individuals right so this is what these individuals they basically make this social pressure so this ceo who maybe is just thinking to earn money but he has pressure from the consumers from stay from other stakeholders like investors from government entities from you know uh, suppliers manufacturers all these people from general public uh, from customers who are expecting them to be ethical so that this whole social pressure is going to make them realize that they have to be ethical in terms of their business practices this is very important and very crucial right so this is one thing and apart from that so you have it you get to know that okay these are the social pressures that are coming into an individual and as i explain that social forces and pressures have a considerable influence on ethics in businesses if a company supplies substandard products and gets involved in unethical conduct if a product is not up to the mark or if you you know they're selling it for very high rates while this is uh, this can be you know as easily available from different competitors or at a lower at a cheaper price so what will happen the customers will become indifferent towards the company they won't want they won't praise the company or they won't you know want to purchase it from this company because they would know that okay uh, you know they are just you know exploiting us and even if you know the prices are correct still if the companies are two of the competitors like for example one company and the other company they're giving it on the, on same cost right but one company is more ethical so what's the benefit of getting it from the company which is not ethical so that's what i'm trying to tell you that you need to be ethical in terms of your behavior in terms of your operations that customers and all stakeholders they just stick stick to your business in all means right and that's how a business can be successful so then we have personal code of ethics the most responsible factor influencing a man's behavior personal code of ethics is very important you can have all the business ethics all the corporate ethics in your organization but when an individual doesn't have you know a personal code of ethics that is that is a point when uh, which is actually concerning because you can learn a lot from a business from an entity from an organization from an hr department who has made some you know code of ethics for you but if you don't have any code of ethics in yourself as an individual then it it gets very hard for you to actually you know grasp these concepts it gets very hard for you to understand what you're supposed to do uh, what should be better for you so these are some of the things which are extremely extremely important that one has to make sure that from their early age they should have these uh you know uh just these code of ethics so like i am giving you these lectures i am teasing uh, teaching you right now i was saying teasing sorry apologies so uh what i'm trying to say is if i am teaching you at this point you people are students right that this is your age where you can adopt business ethics this is your age where you can adopt simple word of ethics in your life not just business because if you're going to have strong personal code of ethics if you're going to have those uh you know that strength within you from the very start which makes you uh you know uh, makes you very strong in terms of business ethics or in terms of any ethics in your life while you're not being a part of any business right now but if you're dealing fairly with your peers with your friends with your family and you're very ethical then it means that you as a whole you in yourself as an individual are having a ethical behavior so most responsible factor influencing a man's behavior is personal code of ethics i hope this is clear because if you're going to have it in, in you then it won't be a problem for you to even adopt these in an organization in a business so this is very very important and i thought of you know telling you this again even though i have told you in previous lectures as well but i want my students and i want all of these people who are listening to me to have ethics in them before starting any business because even if in 5 years time 10 years time if you people will have ethical behaviors within yourself and if i'll come to know about it that you know some some persons out there who listen to my lectures has developed ethical practices within themselves not just business ethics any kind of ethics it's going to be a win win situation for me it's going to be my success as a whole as well right so business ethics is very important
when it comes to uh, individual ethics because business ethics is a secondary step first is the individual ethics that ne- you need to learn in your uh, you know school life college life university life then that is the time when you can learn ethics and then you're going to take it with you in the business as well all right guys so we have factors influencing unethical business practices very important we till now we have covered the factors that were influencing ethical ra- business practices and now we're going to cover factors that are influencing unethical business practices so this is again a very important concept when we are discussing uh for example so some of these examples uh were already given to you as well and i'll give you some more as well so as i mentioned previously we were doing factors that are influencing unethical business practice uh, sorry ethical business practices with examples and now i'm going to sh- uh, show you some of these factors that are causing unethical practices that are influencing those unethical business practices and how these are formulated generated what are the root causes i am going to discuss those with you one by one so i have some of these over here one is sexual harassment very important topic when it comes to unethical business practices it is very important to understand what a sexual harassment term means i before going to the definition i'm just going to bring you to this picture can you check this picture out what can you see you can see a woman she is a woman is working on her laptop it seems like she's sitting in the office on her desk and she's working right and then there's a man who has passed by or who's standing there and he just uncomfortably touches her right and she's not feeling too good about it you can see the expressions she's giving so it shows you that this woman she's not happy with what is happening and she's getting uncomfortable it's not it's not you know decent for her to work like this and she feels uh, you know harassed she feels that she's not feeling comfortable while working in this company in this organization her expressions can tell it all so one of the very important uh, you know reason that causes unethical business practices is sexual harassment it's a big factor that can be categorized as an unethical practice company sometimes what happens is now companies uh, even if this person is touching this girl and she's not happy with this right but there are times when companies uh, sometimes dismiss employee reports of sexual harassment or use gag orders to keep cases out of public knowledge this is a possibility that if one ceo one ceo is sitting in the office and this girl goes to that ceo and tells her, him reports to him that you know this is what happened to me and i felt uncomfortable so there is a possible uh, you know you can say a uh, possibility that the that the ceo or the hr department is going to say or dismiss that employee's report right even if she has written an email even, even if she is given a written document that i have been harassed they might just you know dismiss it or disregard it why because they just want to maintain a good reputation of their organization they don't want to take any sort of action against that employee maybe because maybe you know that employee is favored of the ceo you never know right so there are possibilities when they dismiss the employee reports of sexual harassment or they use gag orders gag orders are when you are basically making sure that such cases stay out of public knowledge right so you don't you tell that girl that you're not supposed to say it in loud in public or tell it to other employees because it's going to create a uh, you know disrespect for our organization so again the ceo is just concerned about his organization and not about this girl's uh, integrity and respect right so companies they sometimes dismiss employee reports of sexual harassment or use gag orders to keep cases out of public knowledge this allow abuse to continue unchecked so what will happen this guy wouldn't care now any time he won't he won't bother he won't get bothered of uh, she complaining to the management because he would know that nothing can happen to me i can, i can continue doing this abuse i can continue practicing like this i can continue harassing her sexually and i also told you people last time that it's not just about sexual harassment all types of harassments are constitute to unethical behavior in an organization and so it's not not just about uh, sexual but any mental harassment or any a type of harassment is going to be a you can say a bad thing for the organization and an unethical practice for the organization second point we have is unfair competition biggest threat to any business unfair competition means that sometimes companies attack their competition through a few a few different types of unethical business practices what can happen is that maybe these organizations uh, one organization who is unethical he wants you know to know the secrets of the other competitor company 
what he can do is maybe he can send one of his employees there and tell them that okay i am here for a job and you know um, i just want to i left this organization because i want to work in this new organization and just grab their secrets from there and take their secrets out and just you know come here and uh, you know tell them they reveal their secrets their way of operations and everything so this is unfair competition this is again a very very uh, you can say sorry a very big unethical practice that needs to be forbidden that needs to be stopped so this is something which is very important and needs to be taken account of that sexual harassment unfair competition again both of these are a very big threat to any organization to any business because it's going to constitute to unethical business practice moving on we have um defamation and bribery again very important very very important thing so two of these factors are uh, are going to tell you that how a business organization can you know get unethical with these two factors as well first is defamation and second is bribery so when you're talking about defaming an organization how can you do that i'm going to read it and i'm going to explain it to you businesses can create fake accounts on social media or post anonymously on blogs or forums to spread lies about a competitor so there are basically different times when you know a uh, organization their social media managers as they're unethical they might create fake accounts they might create posts anonymous posts or they might create you know uh, reviews might uh, post reviews about any organization any of their competitor you know uh, spreading some lies on those forums why so that their reputation can get damaged and everyone comes and purchase the same product from them right from this company who is actually defaming so this is a very big thing that needs to be taken account and this is defamation of other competitor just for the sake of their profit just for the sake of uh, you know getting being number 1 in the industry what companies do is that they create fake accounts they post anonymously on blogs and forums to spread lies and you know do, do this kind of cheating towards these employees uh, sorry employees customers all stakeholders and most of all to the competitors which is very very wrong right so defamation you can see this picture that everyone this is the competitor company for example and these people they are laughing at them them right so they are laughing at uh, these people who are actually defaming them this is not just you can uh, take this uh, picture as a as a company itself or you can take it as an individual so these people they are pointing fingers on this company on this in individual for example this is what defamation is right defaming anyone then we have bribery bribery is again a very important concept uh businesses may bribe government officials or industry leaders to secure better deals or gain a foothold in the market we very well discussed that government officials you know government officials are very uh, powerful and they uh, you know make some rules and regulations in order to make sure that no one just you know <coughs> go against the uh, ethical boundaries right but there are cases when businesses they bribe the government officials that those people who are going to make the reports should be uh, you know writing some good stuff about the company and i had a case where you know uh, there was a food inspection going on in a you know in a factory food factory and what happened was that there was a food uh, inspector he was he belonged to the government and he was bribed right he was bribed and even though the condition of the food factory was very bad but the report was prepared in such a good way that the food factory is the best of the all right so this is what bribery is they'll be paid for it they'll be given money for it they'll be pay paid for it i just put these pictures so that it's get in it gets interesting for you and you understand it in a better way so businesses may bribe government officials or industry leaders to secure better deals or gain a foothold in the market so that you know in an industry again as i told you the defamation also works for this that purpose to uh, gain their position in an organization as the number one position same goes for bribery as well so uh, this was it for today's lecture thank you so much for listening i hope this was beneficial for you but <coughs> you know the the best thing that i could come across today was that in order to be ethical in a business in order to follow business ethics it's very important to have individual ethics right so the ethical norms and ethical uh, standards one has to maintain is through his individual behaviors only then he can be a ethical person in a business as well so i just request all of you to learn from these factors that influence ethical and unethical practices and make sure that you start today from your own self and be ethical thank you very much for watching
See you next time. Bye-bye.